Hi, this is Nino from Cinema 5D. We're here at BSC 2020 in London. I'm here with Barry at the Canon booth. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Good to see you here. Good to see you too. Actually, this is the first time we see the newly announced 1DX Mark III in flesh and blood. Yes. I mean, I would say this is the 1DC that we wanted years ago. Now we have it. What can you tell me about the new DSLR that shoots raw? Sure. Well, you're right. When it comes to the video side, I think we've really surprised a lot of people what this camera can actually do. So for those people who were shooting 1DC, we've given them what they want and probably a little bit more than they were expecting. So this camera in video functionality offers a 5.5K raw internal onto CF Express cards. So that's a phenomenal thing that we can actually offer. Data rate on that is really high, as you'd expect with a RAW file, but when people want to start working within a, a RAW workflow on video, using this with a C500 Mark II, or even with a C200 as a B-roll camera, they can work all together in a RAW, a RAW workflow in the system, which is great. But when we're talking about RAW, we're not talking about the Cinema Lite RAW that you have in the C200 Correct. and the C500 Mark II, right? Correct. So Cinema RAW Lite works at around 2.0 uh, 2.1 gigabits per second on the uh, C500 and works at 1 gigabits per second from the C200. This works at a 2.6 gigabits per second. So it's actually larger because it allows more flexibility in the raw workflow and post-production. So that means how much data can you actually store? How many minutes can you store on a 128 gig card? Uh, approximately around 12 minutes on a 128 card. So yeah, it, it's quite high. Uh, but as we go ahead in the future, the way we're going to be moving into cards that can do terabytes in these cards, that's going to become just the norm and simple to work with. Uh, is there only the full resolution RAW or can you downsample it in camera? You certainly can downsample to a 4K deliverable so you can get all the wonderful full frame from the 5.5K RAW down into 4K package either in an all eye or IPP package. So that's 10, 10 bit? That's 10 bit. So you can get that 10 bit if you're shooting in log. If you're shooting with the color signs from the camera, so just an EOS standard, that will be an 8 bit. So a 4208 bit with the with the uh, the standard, and then with log you can get a 42210 bit. Is there any way to output raw via HDMI or output 10 bit? You can output the 10 bit. So via the HDMI you can get the 4K 42210 bit. You can certainly do that. So you could record raw internally and have 10 bit proxies externally. Uh, Technically, yes, haven't done that yet with the cameras, so ourselves, but you can do a proxy internally. So this camera can do the 5.5K RAW and also deliver a 4K proxy internal on a second card because it has two card slots. There's also a couple of other features that we've actually wanted from the video DSLRs from Canon in a, while, in a long time, actually, yes. um, and that is peaking. Correct. And what else? Focus guide and dual pixel autofocus. So when we're talking about shooting this in full frame, if we're doing the 5.5K RAW uh, at 60 frames per second, you don't get any of the AF functions. And that's down to the processor doing so much in delivering the... Uh, no autofocus with RAW. No autofocus in, uh, in full frame 5.5K RAW. Uh, you can switch on peaking there. So that's a great thing. At least you still have peaking if you want to shoot that. When we go to the 4K RAW, at 30p, because we're going down in frames, you then have full access to dual pixel autofocus and the focus guide and peaking. And so also in 25p. Eh? And 25p as well, when you're going down. So it's just in the 60 frames per second that you don't actually get the, the full AF functionality, but you do get peaking. But the RAW is always 5.5k. There's no, uh, not a lower resolution RAW, is there? In the RAW, there's 4K, which is your 50p. Uh, DCI and then 4K25 and 4K24 all in the raw mode. The only one that doesn't have the AF is the first one. And then we go into 4K DCI, which we can do in the 420 or 42210 bit. And we can also go into a crop mode 4K, which also offers 42210 bit. So you can bring it into the Super 35mm world. In terms of recording, you're using the new CF Express standard. That's right. So this is the card that's really allowing us to do all this. While the camera's processing power and sensor captures everything and processes all all that we then have to be able to transfer that to a card really quickly the only cards that can do that at this time are the CF Express cards so we've got two slots for that inside here and they are phenomenal cards allowing such high data rates to be transferred across so being able to capture raw or the oversample stuff all internally without having to worry about external recorders all the time that makes this a small compact easy unit to use for video functionality what about pricing availability? So it's starting to ship uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, Pricing-wise, street price is around six and a half k, 
uh, Stat Sterling. Euros? No. Yeah, in Sterling. Uh, I'm working in Sterling at the moment. Yeah. It'll start shipping out in the next few weeks, but pre-orders have been really, really high so far as well, which is great. All right. Thank you, Barry. I think that is the Canon DSLR a lot of people have waited for for yes. many years. Yeah. So good luck with it. Appreciate that. And we're looking forward to reviewing it. Thank you very much. Looking forward. Yeah. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned to Cinema 5D to see more of those news videos from BSE 2020.